Okay, now that we know how to discover and exploit CSRF vulnerabilities, let's uh, talk about how to protect websites from them. Okay, if we just go back to DVWA and set the security to high, well, we're gonna have to log in first, obviously. Okay, so set the security to high, mine is already high, but make sure it is high. Uh, so when you go to CSRF, you see that um, what we have here is a very simple way to protect against it, but it's actually really uh, useful, it really it actually works. Uh, the thing is to ask for a current password. So even if you get this form and we do uh, everything we need to hack into send a target person, uh, we, we can't hack it because we, we don't know the current password. So asking for the current password improves the security a lot. It's a good solution though, and, and but for this case you only at least. Because what if, for example, um, you want to hack a form that actually does not change the password? What if the form is just to send a message pertaining uh, to be that person? Uh, what is the, it, it, that's for posting on someone's wall to post things on a personal blog, for example. CSRF have, can be exploited on so different ways as we mentioned about and that this method will only protect against um, changing the password. You can keep asking the person for their password every time they want to post or to do something uh, with their profile. Newer versions of uh, DVWA that don't come with Metasploitable tool actually have a more secure option that will implement the method um, that, that I'm telling you right now. It's actually a different security level called impossible instead of high. We set this to high, but there is one um, this specific model that is called impossible, but it does not matter really because it is not exploitable anyway. So we we don't need to install it. So let's talk about how to prevent vulnerabilities, those type of vulnerabilities from, from happening. Without asking the user to re-enter the information or re-entering the password. If you think about why we're able to exploit it, it was because we were able to copy the form that the website used and send it to the target person and, and get them, get the target person to run it automatically on the person's target computer. Once the request is sent to the server, um, it was not doing any type of validation to check if the user really wanted to change the password. The best way to prevent CSRF is to make sure the user is um, seeing the data through a page that was served by him by a web application and not by anyone else. And a good way of implementing that is to use synchronizing tokens. I know the name sounds like uh, complicated, but the idea is really very simple. Basically, once you generate a unique and random token at the server side, then uh, when the page is loaded or the form is loaded, we will embed this generate a token into that page as a hidden form. Then when the form is submitted, we'll make sure the form is submitted with the token we sent to that specific session or the particular user. Basically, we give the user a token and then we wait from then to submit the form with that particular token we gave him. That way, the token that the hacker will get will only work for, for him itself. Even if they generated a page and send to the target, and the target runs the page, the form will be submitted, but um, it will be refused by the server because the token will not match. Say, for example, we have this particular um, case here on our screen, when you have this client trying to make a request to the web server, um, requesting the uh, facebook.com, password.php. Um, what happens is that it goes to the server, the server will generate a response for that request and it will return the HTML page that represents password.php 
and in that page it's going to include a unique token so when the page is loaded on the client side it we already have the form the user is looking for plus a unique token that was generated by the server so then when the user submits whatever they want to submit back to the server uh, it will only accept the form it will only work uh, if there's one if um, if really the token will match now still if this is not implemented properly this can be exploited for example if the token is predictable you can guess what's the next token that the server will generate or if the same token is being reused then the hacker can uh, probably guess what the token is or even capture the token and embed it to the HTML code and send it through. So the token has uh, to have certain requirements so that it's secure and basically the main two things uh, you want to is to keep in mind that the token have to be unpredictable and cannot be reused. Regardless the way you use it those are the most important things to keep in mind because if it's predictable the hacker will be able to create their own tokens and run the attack. If the token can be reused, they can just use it, right? Get it from um, another user account or trying to generate tokens for themselves and reuse it. So, so they know the token and reuse it. Uh, so in order to make the token unpredictable and make it so uh, it can be used it, the token needs to be um, in a large, use a large uh, key space. So the hacker uh, can't do a brute force attack to discover the tokens because the, the, the amount of possible keys that are generated, the encryption keys is really uh, a very uh, higher, um, a large number. The token must be uh, random so the, the hacker cannot create their own tokens and um, it has to be unique to each user because if, the, if they are similar, like a sequential generation, for example, they can be breakable as well, and they can, they can be, the hacker could be able to break it and and use it against you. So you can increase the security of the token generation by including other factors on the token generation. For example, the date and time, then combine that with the secure random generation and encrypt that. All that happening on the server side, not on the client side. So the hacker will not be able to, to have access to the code, um, not the generation code. Before, um, so before you do that, so do, do, do use all of those different factors, combination, and uh, before send it to the user, encrypt it and, and send it out. So this actually is, um, was, apply it on the Motulia day and I can show you. So here you have Motulia day open and we go to OS 10, CSRF and add to your blog. Um, so this allows us to add a blog post. It does not allow us to change our password or something like that. It actually allows anonymous people to post. It actually will go to uh, have to change the security settings here. So we're going to use the uh, highest security option. So we go into the top. As you see now, you're using security level zero. Tools now I'll click on tool security, now it's security level one. I'll click again so that I'm now on secure level five, which is the, uh, the uh, is the most secure option for most of the day. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna right click the page and go to inspect the element, and I'll scroll up and choose the area I want to show you here. So here you can see that we have the form. And uh, we have um, a hidden input with a very long value, and this is the token. That's one value token. 
Um, this was uh, already generated by the server, and the um, the server will refuse any request that we send to it unless it has this specific token. And if I use the form and send it to someone else, then again the request um, that will be sent will be refused because they have a different token. So this token was generated for me and only for me. So let me show you how it works. So if I refresh here, you see that the token is uh, is different. Okay. Um, I can refresh again. So every time I I refresh my browser, you're gonna see that uh, the token will be refreshed. You're gonna receive a new token. So I can go here, refresh. And as you see, I scroll up again. Yep, so the number is different now. If I go refresh again and go up. Yeah, so I have a different a different token. So what I can do now, uh, I want to show you is I, I'm going to modify the token. So I'll change just the last uh, character here. Instead of the N, I'll just uh, replace it with an F, for example. And what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to try to send the post. So use test and click save blog entry. And as you see, what I got here is that I got an error message. So, and that's because of the token, because we changed the token. But now if I, if I change it back or if I just to refresh my page so that I can receive a new token. Okay, so now I have a new token and I try to post something right now. Then you see that it goes through and you have a, a new blog post entry called test. So that works, it's very simple, and I didn't want to go too much um, in details on how to generate the tokens, as it depends on uh, the programming language that the web application was developed, but I wanted to show you the concept or the idea on how to protect against this type of vulnerabilities. Also make sure the user submits their data to a page that you serve to them and not by a page that someone was uh, given to them, right, so from another person. So we added a token to do that, that is long enough, random and unique, and send that token with a page, with the form, embedded as a hidden form. And whenever a user submit the form, it validates the token, it's matching with the one that was generated by the server.